All right, guys, you officially have two Morbys here today with you. This is um, Morby, old Morby, and young Morby right here. Um, you're no longer a Morby. I am still a Morby. I mean, uh, you are? Yeah, I know. I haven't changed. I started to when we, when me and Trevor first got married, and then it was like a huge stack of papers, and I'm not good at stuff like that. So mm. anyway, yep, still Morby one day, maybe when we okay. have this. Well, today we're going to talk about, um, I'm going to have a couple of different guests here today, guys. We're going to show you how to uh, pull some lists, generate some leads. We're going to jump right into it. So for you, some of you knuckleheads that show up an hour late, I guess so many people show up an hour late to these things. Karate chop. Um, yesterday we had a good 1,200 people basically hang out with me for four hours. That was great. Um, I lost my voice because I was yelling into another microphone for basically four hours. Yeah. The first question I want to answer today is what is the difference between batch leads and privy? Okay. This comes up all the time, Landry. You don't need to worry about answering it. I'll answer it myself. Um, I get a lot of people ask me, what is the difference between batch leads and privy? Guys, I use both first and foremost. Okay. I use privy for on-market opportunities. Um, work, reaching out to agents, and it is one of the best at comping in the industry. It has direct to MLS data. I'm going to say that one more time. Privy has direct to MLS data. Okay. Now, batch leads, which we use and I love, um, costs more money than the monthly subscription that you get charged for. Why? Because it has all sorts of doodads and crawdads in there. Okay. It has all the things. It has um, the ability to skip trace and get people's phone numbers. It has the ability to pull a very specific list. It has all sorts of things that Privy does not focus on. It's not that Privy doesn't have them. It's that Privy doesn't focus on them. It's like going to a Ferrari and trying to say, hey, can I get one of your guys' minivans? They're going to go, we don't sell minivans. Okay. It's just not their focus. Okay, so Privy and Batch Leads actually supply two completely different things to the industry. It's not if I should use this or that, it is I use both, okay? Whether you wanna use both or not, that is up to you. I don't care, but I'm just gonna tell you how we use them, okay? All right, so yesterday, I'm at a property, Landry, um, that is, is a di diabolical disaster, okay? I'm gonna tell you a little story. I'll, um, I'll keep you with me for about 30 minutes. You don't, you don't have that, okay. you don't have that long, right? Yeah, I have until, yeah, that, that would be good for me. In my mind, Landry is still 16 years old. 24, now. <laughs> I'm old Actually, now. in my mind, you're like eight. I know. I, yeah, those are the, the memories we have. I feel like there's so many people in the family. It's easy to have those memories, the old ones. Yes, guys, we have 12 children in our family. Landry, you are number nine or 10. 11. What? 11. I'm right above Annika. And you're what? number three. You're aren't not you? older than Hudson? No. Why do you not? Why do you act way more mature than him and actually have a job? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I won't tell him he's really. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Guys, nobody's safe, okay? Nobody's safe. Even my own family's not safe. All right. Funny. Um, so so far away. I legit am like, she's not she's nine. And I was thinking Hudson was younger than you, and then Annika was younger than him. But you are second to youngest. Holy crap. How you're 24. So yeah. when I when I got my driver's license, mom and dad had you. Yeah, we're I, yeah we're sixteen years apart. That's pretty cool, guys. Give uh, yeah. Landry some love in the side chat. Tell her thank you for being here. Um, yes, a lot of people. She is very beautiful. I can tell you. I'm not to diminish her beauty, but I have eight sisters that are all as beautiful as her. Eight. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Sisters. Sisters. Okay. If you guys lived next door to me and became my best friend, you would have had your pick of the litter, you would have been able to go and say, I would like to date that one or that <laughs> one. That's funny. A funny story. We moved to Pleasant Grove, Utah. It's the summer before my summer year or my senior year. My current best friend today 
hated my guts. He lived next door to us. So we move in, he lives next door and he hated my guts because I was the new kid on the block. Then we go to church and he sees the whole lineup of all of our sisters in our family. And he says, he walks up to me, he's like, hey man, I've been kind of a dick to you. You want to be friends? <laughs> You're like, why? I'm like, why? He's like, uh, that's your sister, right? He was looking at Harmony. <laughs> and then he found out Harmony was basically engaged. And then he's like, and then he went for Marika. Yeah. Just go down the line. Oh, they're not, that's even happened, you know, uh, years past, like when me and McLaren used to hang out a lot when uh, I was in high school and she'd like be on a picture of people like, who's your friend? I'm like, she's taken. They're like, okay. And they'd watch out for the next picture. They're like, who's that friend? So yeah, they might. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so Leif still to this day just stayed in the guest house a couple of days ago. Um, here we are now that was 20. Holy moly. How long ago was that? This is a long, I didn't even realize that. That was 24 years ago. When you were born, yeah. okay. When you were born, you were a baby, maybe a year old. I became friends with Leif. No, uh, -uh. Yep, yeah, 24 were you, were you years there ago. when I got to see him just the last time or two times ago when I came to Arizona, I saw him, I took a picture with him and it was so weird and talking to his son, I was like, I don't even remember the last time I saw you, but <laughs> it was so cool. I was excited to see him. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That's That was Leif in that story? Yep, that was Leif. Oh, wow. So um, my sister, guys, works for BatchLeads.io. If you guys decide you want to sign up with BatchLeads, there is a coupon code PACE. I call it sushi money. Yes, I make money from it. I have not even promoted BatchLeads in almost two years um, just because so many people just use BatchLeads. It's a very common product. Um, BatchLeads.io code is PACE. We call it sushi money because I get I make basically enough money when you sign up that I can buy like one piece of sushi. It's like five bucks or something like that, okay? Um, Nancy says, I use Batch Leads. Javier says, Nobu. I definitely could not afford Nobu from what uh, Batch Leads pays us, but I could afford like all you can eat sushi, like the conveyor belt ones. It's like three day old sushi. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, so here's, here's where Batch Leads comes in way clutch for me. It comes in really well when I wanna pull a very specific list. Okay. Um, so Landry's going to pull a list for us today. You guys want to, you guys want to see Landry pull a list for us on batch leads today. So when you, when people go, I, you're brand new and you're like, I don't even know what pulling a list means. Okay. Landry, what do you have the, the ability to pull up a list on your account or what are you going to do? Yeah. Here, let me share my screen. Are you going to go into my, my batch leads? Um, we can do your batch leads. If you send me your, um, your login, then I can get in there. Or if you want me to just do it in my account, either. I way. don't trust. I don't trust you. Oh, <laughs> you'll buy, you'll well, buy all the skip traces. Has lots of stuff in there. I teach, I teach people how do you, this is like my bread and butter. Um, I'm the community manager now for batch instead of like back in the day for batch driven kind of thing. So I do all the, the good stuff. So very cool. All right. So let's do, um, let's get you to screen share. I'm going to pull myself off the screen. You'll still be able to hear me. You just, I just won't be pinned. I want to pull multifamily list in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Hey, Zach, Zach Russell, I don't use prop wire. I don't, I, I don't know anybody that uses prop wire. I, all my friends use prop stream, or I'm sorry. All my friends use batch leads. Some of them use prop stream and most of my friends use privy. Okay. When you're brand new, I can tell you right now that can you comp here on batch? Yes, you can comp on batch. I just don't prefer to do it. I'm just, guys, I'm just being honest. This, I'm, I got my sister here that works at Batch Leads, which is my friends. I'm just telling you the honest truth. Whether you sign up or not, that's not my problem, okay? Okay, so let's go, can we go to Arizona and pull a multifamily list? Yes, let's go to Phoenix. So I'm just gonna come in here to property search, easy. And then I'm gonna just go to the city of Phoenix. You can search anywhere, you know, an entire county or what have you, but uh, let's go to the filter. So it's just pulling up your your grand total. So over 447,000, but that's not what we want. So let's say that we're gonna come in here. When you're doing, you're obviously you're looking for residential, right? Pace, when you're looking for multifamily, I, I don't know if you're doing other things in that realm, but. Um, resident, do, do residential and um, let's do commercial too. Okay, cool. 
So we're going to look for those classifications of properties. And then I just found this out today. Currently, if you guys have batch leads or if you get it eventually, um, if you do go in here to pull a multifamily list, you kind of, it's the way that counties and, and different vendors display their data in uh, how they're categorizing like the property type. It's kind of like interchangeable. So coming in here and kind of just selecting all of the multifamily things helps pull the largest list. But I know that let's do like multifamily dwelling, um, residential income, multifamily. And then there was this other one that has a couple parameters in terms of multiple units, like five plus in here. Yeah, five plus is what I want. Okay. But I'll, we can we can do all, because here here's Landry. Just so you know, mul, mul, we don't consider multifamily multifamily until it has five units or more. So in real estate, like for most real estate investors, if it's four like a fourplex, a threeplex, or a duplex, you would go, oh yeah, that's multifamily. It's actually technically not multifamily. It's still considered single family. But I'm I'm okay looking for the threeplexes, the duplexes, all that kind of stuff too. So okay. let's, let's leave all that. Okay, let's do it for this one. That's that's good to know. I had no idea. I mean, it makes sense, but yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. Like if I, the reason why they do that is because lenders, the people who give money to people like me that are buying this stuff, they want to differentiate between single family and multifamily. So they have loans for five units and above, and um, loans for four units and below. Okay. Well, you never know. You learn something new every day. Okay. Two, so every day. Yeah. Every day. So let's do, do you still want to do? I want one story. story. Yeah. I want okay. one story. Cause I'm thinking about turning this into co-living. Um, I don't want to do reg traditional like rentals. I'm going to do co-living and I don't think co-living people want to have two stories. So let's yeah. go one story. Okay. Let's go down to ownership info. So we can do yeah, 10, 10. I want 10, 10 years people. minimum ownership. Yep. And then let's see, I think that was, oh, and high equity um, as well. So you can come in here, valuation equity. What would you put as your percentage, like 30, 40? 50%, 50%. 50%. I want rich, rich okay. ass people. All right. So yeah, so we're finding residential, commercial. And then obviously you can see, I just put a bunch of property types just for everybody to kind of view that one story, 10 plus years ownership and 50% equity or higher. So okay, unshare on. your screen for just a second. Okay. okay. I want to, I want to ask people a couple of questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Does everybody understand now what pulling a list means? We're going to go and identify a list of properties that we want to get addresses for, and then we are going to skip trace and get their phone numbers. And that now becomes a list that myself or my virtual assistant can call on. Right. And why am I choosing? Give me a yes in the side comments, guys. It should, it should give you the ability to chat. Um, unless Carly turned it off. Carly might have turned it off. Oh yeah, there you go. Does everybody, did, did anybody learn? Give me a this if you learned something new just barely in the last five minutes. Okay. Now, somebody just asked me a question of why do you choose high equity? Well, I can do low equity for sub two. Write that down. Low equity means sub two. Um, seller finance is high equity. Okay. So it doesn't really matter if a seller has a lot of equity. I'm t they're typically, okay. They're typically going to be own. They have owned the property for 10 years. Why did I use 10 years? I use 10 years because typically a landlord that's owned a property for over 10 years is what we call a tired land lowers. They freaking hate managing their tenants. They are sick of it. They are not great business owners. Can we all agree that like 90% of people you'll ever meet in your life that are business owners are actually pretty shit at being a business owner? Like, let's be real, okay? It's very few people are actually great business owners, yeah. okay? So think about people that go and they're like, they go become, actually, I'm going to be, can I be honest with you guys? Some of you guys right now are going to buy some multifamily deals in the next five years. And in about 15 years from now, I'm going to buy them from you on seller finance because you will pop up on my tired landlord list. And I am a better operator than you. And I will buy them shits right from you on seller finance. Cause you'll be like, I can't manage this. I'm not a great manager of property. Okay. Does that make sense? Ch Eugene says challenge accepted. Okay. But that's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. 
um, these people are not great business operators. And so how do you know they are tired? Teresa, we're taking a shot in the dark. We're taking a guess. Okay. Teresa, um, who, the, the, let's see, let's see this. Um, if I wanted to find a single man to pick up, would I have a high likelihood of maybe finding that man at, where would I find a single man? If I wanted to find a, a guy that it's like pretty sure he's single, where would I go? Bars. Okay. But how, a prison. <laughs> I saw, you know it's Applebee's. You, Applebee's. <laughs> you know what's funny about the prison thing? I like for a second I was like, yeah, of course. Like, what woman wants to be married to a guy in prison? But you know, there's like women that are actually attracted to that. Yeah. So okay. we're just kind of we're kind of just taking a guess, to be honest. Okay. Um. Wow, Sh Sean Collins, y'all y'all got some new people questions up in here, huh? Some new people questions in here. Um, guys, if you're going to ask questions in the side chat, be prepared to have me call on you. Don't be one of these people that doesn't know how to use your phone or your whatever. Okay. Sean Collins. <coughs> we can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. Can you, when you answer your phone, you need to have like Phil Collins as like your ringtone and tell everybody that that's your dad. I should. Yeah. Um, Sean, yeah, high buddy. equity is pretty literal, meaning it means exactly what it says. So the, the seller has a lot of equity, which means they bought it 10 years ago, they've owned it long enough, that they've paid down that loan and the property's gone up in value. Therefore, they have a really, really good amount of equity. Does Is that your question? Yeah, that's basically what I was asking because like I've looked on, uh, my wife got privy in that and you can see, you know, on county records, like what the original mortgage terms were and how, when it was, established and what the percentages were, but you can't tell obviously how much they paid down on it. And so I was just, it sounds like it's a duration and an assumption that. Um, a duration and an assumption on Privy, yes. Okay, but let's, let me tell you why I love Privy. Privy is really great for just about anybody in this business. Okay? okay. It's like, it's like 97 bucks a month. Okay. There's no way you can even spend more than 97 bucks a month in privy. I don't think there's anywhere you can go in there and be like, is there a button in here? I can spend more money. However, batch leads is not like that. Batch leads is like, Oh, let us sell you a list. Like this list I'm pulling right now is going to cost me money. Ah. Okay. Well, the list isn't going to cost me money, but yeah. I still have to yeah. skip trace that I need the phone numbers, right, Sean? Yes. So I could eat, I could do one of two things. I could be a lazy P POS like I used to be and value my time this much. And I could go to true people search and not spend any money. Okay. But the okay. likelihood of those fun phone numbers being really efficient on true people search is actually relatively low. So what I like about batch leads is that I'm willing to spend money to skip trace. It's a stupid word that nobody knows what it means, but it means gather the correct sellers information, cell phone, email addresses, if they have them, et cetera and you spend money per skip or per record. Does that make sense? Yes. Privy does not do that. It does okay? not have trace capability at all, right? It does not. And okay. I actually think that that's a good thing for people that are brand new because people that are brand new are like, I, look, I just need the basics of the basics. I don't need, I, I'll go to true people search. I'm currently one of those lazy knuckleheads. I will just not spend money and I, I applaud that because it's like anything you can do to get started and spend as little amount of money as possible is great. And you can always bump up to batch leads at some point when your time becomes more and more valuable because you as, as a human have become more valuable because of the skills that you've obtained since you signed up, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, maybe at a, 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 for a plug for using those skip trace capabilities, like just we're just getting started in, in the researching, you know, with the elephant challenge and stuff. My wife joined Gator and but we've we signed up for Astro Blaster and then I've joined the elephant challenge and I was on a Dumbo dial with Dawn call. And, uh, you know, she's like, who wants to do calls? And they pulled up a list of expired listings with agents to call. And 
just that having that list in front of you, if you're not afraid to pick up a phone and call somebody, it's awesome to just be able to yeah. have that set of phone numbers and just start going down the list and seeing who you can talk to. So I thought that was pretty cool. Love that. So the whole goal of what we're trying to do here is just get a list of things to call on and, and then ultimately generate leads. You can't generate leads without some sort of a list, right? So thank you, Sean, for your question. Was that helpful for other people in the side chat? Okay, now, a couple of things. Guys, the whole thing of like Flipster and PropStream and PropWire, holy moly. Ho I can't even imagine sitting in your guys' brain all the time. Oh, this software isn't working, so I better go over to this software. Oh, this software isn't working, I better go to this software. Guys, the software works when you apply the software, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me sign up for PropWire. PropWire is the new thing. It No, now it's this. Now it's this. Now it's this. And then you keep coming to me and saying, well, what about this? Guys, I don't know. I picked one. Okay. I picked one that works. I, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and be, this is not a compare. This isn't a taste test. Okay. We're not doing like Baskin Robbins taste all 31 flavors of the ice cream. I'm picking an ice cream and my, I'm moving on. Okay. I, I went to Baskin Robbins. I'm in for five minutes. I walk out. I'm enjoying my ice cream driving home. You're stuck at Baskin Robbins going, Oh my gosh, there's so many dishes. Can I get a taste test of that one? Can you give me a little dollop of that one? Can you give me a little dollop of that? Meanwhile, I'm at home making love to my wife. Like, Move on with your life. Just pick one. Kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, when you see like new medications come out on a commercial and it's like, ask your doctor today. And I'm like, I'm sure these doctors are like, please don't ask me about it. Just use the one that you <laughs> use the one I told, but hold on. I'm looking for the easy button that doesn't require any work. I actually, I made a joke. Okay. Check this out. I made a joke to my partners, like maybe two, three years ago. I go, we should start a software company that's literally a duplicate of like prop stream, but I'm going to change the name of it to easybutton.com. And I'm just going to say, here's the easy button. Cause that's what people are doing. They're looking for the easy button. They're not look, they're not just going, how do I use the software that successful people are using? Find people that are successful. Not like you want to find somebody that's doing, one deal a month on prop wire or 10 deals a month on prop wire, whatever it is that you, I don't know prop wire. I chose what I chose three years ago. I'm successful at it. We love it. If the, if the will was already invented, why would you as a scientist be in the, in the shop right now trying to invent the wheel? It's been invented. Batch leads did it. Pr Privy did it. End of story. Okay. No more questions about prop wire, prop stream, proppy, 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 doppy. I don't know what all these other things you guys got going on. Stop it. Okay. Just pick and go. I can you imagine what what would what would you see in some of these people's brains that are like bouncing around from one thing to another? It's a lot. I mean, with people that I'm talking to all the time, it's it's a lot, you know, even back in the day with like batch driven and everything, uh, as you know, um, just that's why it's been so cool for like more and more. And they're just an FYI, there's like agent outreach and stuff like that. And way, way crazier MLS data coming in batch lead soon, which is going to be cool. But the whole point of that is that there are so many things out there. There's no doubt about that. But uh, what I always tell people is like, give yourself the patience, start clicking on the buttons just to see what it is. And then, you know, continue the next day, especially, you know, yeah. if you have somebody teaching you like me. I will teach you how to there do you that. There you go. There you go. That's there what you, you do go. and then continue, continue on after that. That's the key. So. Um, anyway. Yes. Privy handles. How does Privy handle non-disclosure states? Roger, can I answer the question to you? That's never been a concern of mine in my life, nor do I care. The, the thing is, do I care? Here's what I care about. Does my team do deals in Texas and other non-disclosure states like Utah and other places? Yes. Stop being a creative avoidance creator. 
you are creating, you are being in creative avoidance mode. Okay. Stop with the overthinking. Okay. Let's pull a list. Okay. Um, pulling a list is great. Um, on batch leads. I love it. Pull it back up. I, here's what I'm looking for. I was at a house the other day. It's a nightmare house. I, I need you now for 15 more minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're totally fine. I'll so go. let's pull that, pull that list. Let's pull, click on the, you let's save it. You got it. How many records does it say? So it pulled up about 1600. So we could start oh, that's perfect. You know, looking perfect, into perfect. all that. We can save them. Do you want to save them? Yep. Save them. Let's save this to a list and a tag. I'll just name this multifamily, you know, for now. Um, call it prop wire multifamily list. Just to confuse people. <laughs> They're like, wait, wait, wait. I thought you said. <laughs> what about prop wire? In okay, fact, okay, okay. somebody <laughs> should change the name of prop wire to what about prop wire? <laughs> then I'll always remember this list. I'm like, what is this one? Okay. Uh, oh my gosh. I'm trolling you guys. Oh, by the way, multifamily is spelled without the hyphen. If my friend Vina Jetty knew you spelled it that way, she'd yell at me. There you oh, go. It's just one I word. No, no. One <laughs> word, one word, one word. Oh, okay. Surprisingly, okay. I did not know that either. It's mul It's one word. Nice. Well, there's another thing. I'm learning all the things today. Okay. Let's see. Do we have enough uh, money for this? Oh, this is something new. Hold on. Oh my gosh. It's because the other day when I... I made a mistake and I pulled a hundred thousand records into my account and went over like way, obviously way over my limit. Um, let me pay for it's only stuff. 12 bucks. Oh, it's only $12. You're right. By the way, with this, it's cause I'm over my limit, but I've never ran into this. It's cause I, yeah. Anyway, it's safe now. Yep. Just and spend batches of money. I don't care. They, those guys are driving Lam Lambos spend their money. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have it in here. Uh, let's see. Let me pull that up now. Here's my prop wire multifamily. Okay. So just FYI, and it's taking a second to load in here, but I'm just now in my list. So this is now my save data rather than pulling. This is where I pull the lists that are out there of all the good stuff. And then after you save it, it lives here so you can manage it and do all the, all the magic here. Uh, guys, I don't drive a Lambo today. I drove my Prius. That's, that's how I'm, I'm rocking my life. Okay. It's a way to go. Okay. So now, um, guys, the, the overthinking questions, we'll get to them. I just want to get Landry out of here. Okay. Could people get the same list Taylor? Oh my word. This is so great to me. Oh my gosh. I'm one. I'm so curious where some of these questions come from. I need, I need to, I need to know. I need to be satisfied. I need to know. Taylor, be ready for this. I need to know. Taylor, where's that question coming from, brother? Uh, just out of curiosity. But where does the curiosity, you got, come on, bro. Give me the source of the curiosity. Come on. Well, cause I don't use this. I use privy. Okay. But what, what, what does that have to do with the question? I, I, I think it's a good question. I'm not criticizing you. I just want to know where does it come from? Are you saying, I hope that nobody else gets this list or are you saying, yeah. Oh my gosh, this really? Yeah. Like does is it just one generic list or do multiple people get the list? Okay. Can I tell you something? I mean, I'm assuming no, but every, no, every list that you will ever pull 500 other people have pulled that same list and is are calling on that same list. Maybe 501. Okay. I'm going to say this one more time. Every list that you will ever pull in your life, 500 plus people are also pulling that list and skip tracing it and calling and texting that seller. Taylor, what, what, what kind of company do you currently work for? Um, a semiconductor. Okay. So, the, the good thing is about your semiconductor company is that they're the only ones that make semiconductors, right? No. Oh, wait. So they have competition? Correct. Who's their competition? Uh, TI, TSMC, a um, bunch of others, I guess. Oh, dang. So you're telling me that they're not the only ones that know how to make semiconductors, and yet your semiconductor company you work for probably makes billions of dollars in revenue, right? Yeah. Crazy, huh? Yeah, that, that, that makes more sense now. Yep. I'm going to tell you right now, 
competition is a good thing, brother. I promise you. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, nope. Get that. Okay. So g- great question. But the faster you get over that thought process of, oh my gosh, how do I pull a list that nobody else has? You will never pull a list that nobody else has. Right. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Thank you. Good. Good question. Reminds me, based on a, I can't remember, it was a while back, but of you got you, Jamil, I think it was on Wholesale Hotline back in the day, but um, you guys talking about all these different lists. Like I even pulled a couple of them, like empty nesters and things like that, that are just awesome ones to share. And Mm -hmm. you're like, only a percentage of you guys pulling these lists are going to take the action on it too. So I think sometimes people will pull the data, but then just look at it, you know, is a big thing too. Um, Dustin Williams says, how does batch get this data? Um, they wish for, they put it on their wish list for Santa Claus every year and Santa Claus throws it down their chimney and gives it to them. I, I don't know. Public record part of it. Different sources, 13, a bunch of, you know, all the dark web, the dark web, Bitcoin, they get it from Bitcoin. The That's where they get it from. We have the best data. No doubt about it. Okay. Um, all right, hit, hit, help me out here. Where you got the list? It takes a while to skip trace, right? No, it takes a second. It's loaded in my account now. So, do you want to go ahead and? Yes, spend yeah. uh, spend batches money while I have you. Okay, so I'm coming in here. I can see my 16, or they're still loading in here. I have like 900 now. But let's just go ahead, and I'm going to grab. I don't think I have enough to skip trace the entire list. So I'm just going to select, let's say, like 100 of these, just to show you how that would work. Oh, you're trying to save money. That's what you're trying I, to do. I know because yeah, this is my example account. So you're going to get in trouble. No, Come, dude, I give, me, use it all. <laughs> give me at least 250. Give me 250 right now. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Don't yeah. be too, don't be so stingy. Okay, fine. I'll share. Okay. 150 or two. Our parents didn't teach us to be stingy. Did they? No. Is that something you learned like in Tennessee? <laughs> What'd you say? Is this something you learned in Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah. It's the ways out here. <laughs> okay. There we go. So 250 actions, skip trace. Let's just name it again. Acquire. Maybe uh, name it, n- name it. Pace made me do it. So when the owners okay, of Batch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do that. The, the owners, owners of Batch me. are like, why are you spending money in the account? Um, just say Pace made me okay. do it. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to skip trace. It only takes a couple minutes to get it, but eventually after the data uh, loads up, it's going to be on all the details of these properties. It'll go through, make sure there's no duplicates and uh, only charge you for things that actually bring data back, but then you can actually go into the details and all the, this good stuff. You can start making phone calls depending on your plan, like right here, or just make it on your phone, but then okay. you can start diving into all this good stuff. Okay. Can you, um, can you, um, can you chart, can you bill me for this? How, how do, can you just tell batch to bill me so I can get the whole list or sh- do I need to go oh, back in there and skip? I it myself? See. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could. Here's what I want you to do. Let me see if I have enough in here and I could just select all of them. Tell batch to bill me and I will, I will pay for it. I'll Venmo somebody. Okay. Um, guys, I don't, just so you know, I don't weed out the do not call list. I'm just going to be really honest with you. I'm sorry. People feel like you got to say all the right things when you're on the inter- interwebs, but I'm just telling you the truth. I will absolutely call the do not call list all day, every day. I mean, Donna, Donna Austin's like, finally, that? someone's honest. I mean, I've been pretty honest the last couple of days. <laughs> I only, in fact, I might call, I might pull a list that's the only the do not call list. Alan Knoll says, that's not a good advice. Well, I'm just telling you what I do. You guys can choose what to do with your own life. Okay. Look at the pace, maybe do it list. This is so freaking good. Okay. This one right here, I'm going to send it to you. It's loading okay, send, right now. Send it to me. I'm going to give it away to like five people tonight at the end of the, at the end of the night, I'll give it away. And okay. then just tell big, just to tell um, batch to bill me, okay? Okay. All right. Pretty easy, right? Right now, yeah. And then you can just export it off as well. Like if you don't want it in your account, then you just pull it right off. It's done. So I'm gonna you're, email it to you. You're amazing. I get that sometimes. 
Okay, Landry, when, if somebody signs up for a batch leads, okay? Yep. How do they get help? Like, are they just sign up and then they're sitting there like floating around in batch leads interwebs and nobody's there to help them? Or like, how do they, how do they actually get help? Well, first off, our support is awesome. Somebody usually reaches out like right when you get started. But the, the biggest thing I can recommend doing is clicking on the blue and white B. I actually make all of the help center videos and try to stay on top of updating those for you guys too. I love the education side of it and how to use softwares in a way that you guys don't have to have a headache thinking about your computer and you can start focusing on you know your your negotiating skills and all of the other things that you want to put your time and energy into, not an app. So I help alleviate that, uh, and then we have support in here too. So help center, and then um, can I share the link to our community? I'd love to invite anybody yes, in there, just like course. whoever. Yeah, let me get the this link. You guys should jump in here. Uh, we actually just had our first community call today, right before this. It was really cool, just people getting started and uh, that are more seasoned everything under the sun. It was really awesome. So let me do that because that's the best way to get connected with me and join challenges, join master classes where I teach you guys everything you need to know. Hey, and also all you guys out there, um, my sister is married. Okay. Oh. Just so you know, okay. You don't get this beautiful and not get ringed up really fast. Okay. So some of you guys that are like, oh, I'm going to sign up for bat so I can talk to Landry. Unless you're a great closer. Actually, I would doubt, I doubt it. Landry is a better closer than you. So it ain't happening. Just immediately realize the answer is no. That's funny. Okay. Um, okay. You are awesome. I love you. Will you please put the link in the side chat for people or did you not already do that? Here, I'm going to do it right now. I love you too. Thanks for having, having me on here. It's so good when I get to connect with you. Cause you know, there's only like Annika and McLaren, um, are like my closest buddies. So it's always good when I get to tell, tell the rest of the family that if they want to connect with me, they got to be making money with me like you are. So that's, that's the only way I'll connect. Yeah. And I saw you, I just wanted to tell you too, I got to see you speak in person at the growth event. I thought that was so cool. That was a, just a great presentation that you had. So just love you and proud of you and look up to you so much. Thank you. That's all I want to hear from people is that they're proud of me. Thank you, sister. Love you. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to send that to you. Uh, Pace, I'm probably going to text you for your email address and then click that link, guys. This is the batch service community. It's okay if you don't have batch, um, but if you're curious, want more info, want to learn about it, that's the way to go. So thank anyway. you. Thank All you. Right. Carly, Carly, will you pull her off the uh, uh, thing? And then will you, Carly, also get her to get me the link for the list so I can give the list away tonight? I want people to call on that list for me. Thank you. Okay. Bye pace. Okay. Bye. Um, all right guys. Um, so I want to, I want to point out a couple of things to you, right? Cause we've been talking about avatars. We've been talking about stuff. Yes. This is the, this is the challenge with batch leads. Okay. When you're brand new, your bank can really get damaged by using batch leads. Okay. I'm just being honest. This is why I'm, I'm still, I'll tell you right now, I'm their, their number one affiliate at Batch Leads. I love them. We use them. They're great. However, I don't talk about them openly because I get people that come back to me and go, man, that really hurt my pocket and I never got a deal out of it. What you do is you have a monthly subscription, okay? I think it's a couple hundred bucks. And then you have to skip trace on top of that. Okay. And buy phone numbers and do all that kind of stuff. And that can eat a, eat a big hole. And then they have a texting platform. So you text through there and that costs money to text as well. So like all the actions you perform in batch leads costs you money. Now, can you be in business without spending money? No. Here's why I push privy so much. I think everybody should have privy. Even if you have batch leads, or you don't have batch leads. If you have prop wire or whatever that is, wire jaw, whatever, I don't, I don't know what that is called, but prop wire, um, all the other things that you guys turn into little, you know, squirrel, 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 buy another piece of software. No matter what you have, Privy should be the foundation of the number one tool you should have in real estate. And that is why I brought in my good friend, Benson from Privy. Can you bring Benson on the platform for me today? 
this capitalist pig right here. How you doing, brother? Hey, good. How are you? Really, really good. Thanks for th thanks for letting me have your competition on the screen. But I I think it's funny because I actually don't think Batch Leads is a com competitor of your guys's. There's a little bit of overlap, but honestly, I refer people to Batch all the time because they do a lot of things that we don't do and probably will never do. Oh, I love and that. So that's totally fine. And you know what? I actually saw your sister in San Antonio, but I didn't get a chance to say hi. She was there with the batch crew. Mm. Guys, I, did you just hear what this awesome man just said? He says, I refer people to batch because there are certain businesses that should be using batch. What's a business that should use batch? I'm going to open up the chat. What is an avatar that probably should be using batch at some point? Direct to seller, right? Not direct to agent. We talked about this yesterday. Direct to agent is very cost effective and you don't have to really spend a lot of money at all to go direct to agent. This is why Privy is so magical, okay? Peggy Stevens says, I love you, Benson. Well, that is nice. I, I want to tell you another thing, if you don't mind, Pace. I'm at a, an event in um, Houston right now and um, they had some people on a panel board and they were talking about marketing and they were saying that the people that are investing the most in marketing right now are people that have already figured the business out. They already know their systems. They've A, B tested all their marketing channels. They know like what works in their target area and they know who their audience is. So they're willing to double down and invest the, the money to, to do that. But for, for beginners, like a lot of the people that are here, it can be a challenge. And like you said, many people start off in the marketing world and they, they think that they're going to go to generate leads, but they don't realize that it's basically a sales job. Yeah. If you do off market, you better be a really good salesperson. You better have. I literally just told, I said this yesterday for like 30 minutes. I told everybody off market, you have to learn a completely different skill set, which is great negotiation, amazing rapport. And that is not something that a lot of brand new people are going to be really great at. And could you figure it out? I bet you everybody here could probably figure it out, but are you going to run out of money before you do? A lot of people probably. do. Everybody here is great entrepreneurs. Everybody here is smart, but figure out the business in general before you start trying to be an amazing marketing person, a salesperson. But there are some people here that have the gift of gab and are just good at sales right out of the gates. Damn, were you on my live yesterday, dude? No. I, I, guys, did we not just talk about this yesterday? I said that there's people who in here is a natural uh, visionary. Like you don't need, you don't need a book, a seminar, a coach or anything to tell you how to talk to people. Who, who are my, who are my people that are like, dude, I'll talk to anybody about anything at any point. Okay. Now who are the opposite? Who are the people who are like, yo, I, I need scripts. I need practice. I'm scared. I last thing I, yeah, Carolyn says after a few drinks. Guys, this is why direct to agent is really helpful for that personality type. Yeah. Okay. And the best part about it, and this is why I've just been really transparent. And I love Batch. My sister works at Batch. I'm really good friends with Batch. I tell them I love them. We've we've all grown up at our businesses together the last six years. But I don't really promote Batch that much because Batch can be something that really smashes your wallet in the very beginning. Um Whereas Privy doesn't, I can't, if I tried to spend more money on Privy, I don't think I can besides my monthly subscription. Can I? Yeah. You could buy like 10 accounts and just like give them out. Just, but most people don't. They get yeah. one. So no, with one account, if I just had one account, I can't spend any more money than just my monthly fee. Right. Right. There's no upsells right now. Okay. So guys, does that make sense to you? Why I, I if I, if you're just starting out, Privy is a much easier software, better software. And then here's another um, thing that people really worry about. It's like, well, you know, Privy is not, does not have direct to MLS data in my area. And I'm like, their non-direct to MLS data is as good as batches non-direct to MLS data in those areas or prop stream. Okay. So stop right. overthinking that. Okay. Yes. Angel Whitney. She says, is this really live? Yes. How about that? Except AI is so smart, Angel Whitney, that this is actually an AI pace. 
that knows how to read the side chat and change up the script. Okay. You've been AI'd just so you know. Um, Taylor says due to privy, I made it. That's cool. You know, I was with you probably a year ago, something like that. And we were in the hard rock hotel in Fort Lauderdale area in, um, Florida. And we went to dinner. That was a fun dinner. And I, you know, just getting to know you, I just said, Hey man, what, what lights your light bulb? Like what's, what brightens you up? And you said, going to these, these events and hearing all the stories of people that have made 40 grand, 50 grand, 80 grand, hundred thousand dollars, 20 grand, five grand, two grand, a thousand dollars on their first deal because they use privy. Yeah. It it's really is the coolest thing that you get to live in that purpose. Oh yeah. You, you and I, Jamil, there's a lot of people where we just grind and we, I think we put others before ourselves and it takes, I think there's a lot of people like that, but you really have to enjoy what you're doing. Like I, I enjoy what I do, but sometimes it, you can't see the forest through the trees and it gets like, there's a challenge there. There's a struggle there. But when I hear about people that are actually making it, like they're finding their first deal, Jamil told me, and he's, he talks about this. He says 70% of all of his students find their first deal on Privy. Mm. Like that's insane. It's really cool. And so you're, you're exactly right. Like that's what keeps me going. I love it when people find their first deal or get the confidence just to write an offer. Remember back when, when you created that what, world's uh, record, what was it 900 and something offers? It was or, like 1,270 offers in one day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like that is insane. There was, there's nobody in the world that could have made that happen besides you. Well, you were with me. You made it happen. Well, Privy was helping, right? There was, there was an element of technology and we were able to generate the leads to make it possible. But if we said everybody has to find an off-market deal to make an offer on, you'd have like 10. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. there are a couple of people that are saying, here's a couple of questions, okay? Um, what is Privy and what does it do? We'll get into that in just a second. I'll keep Benson up here for probably 45 minutes and then I'll let him go. He's got, he's out of Houston. You're in Houston right now. I am. Um, yep. Awesome. Um, so you're what, whose event? It's Tim Mai's heroes coaches event. Love it. That, that event changed my life two and a half years ago. That was a great event. Your name came up like half a dozen times today. Mm. Already it's day one. Oh, people, and people think I suck. No, you're just making an example of somebody who's doing cool shit. Mm, I see. You want to hear some cool shit? Yeah. We officially hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller list, and the book has not even come out until next Tuesday. I didn't even know you had that, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I learned today, actually. I love it. Yeah, I learned today that, that you were releasing that. I love well, it. Your, it means your I'm not marketing producer. hard enough. I'm not marketing hard enough. I should be at the Hero Summit and talking about this. Um, okay, so question number one, what is Privy? What does it do? We'll, we'll jump in that in a second. Uh, question number two, what is the MLS? The MLS is, uh, means multiple listing service. It's a stupid acronym and it's a stupid word. All it means is that where all the real estate agents list or put all the properties for sale, so that all the other real estate agents that are representing buyers can see all the houses that are for sale. It's the biggest buyers list in the world, okay? So if you have MLS quality data, that means your data is pretty top notch. And for the longest time, you weren't able, as a regular person like me, I'm not a real estate agent, you couldn't get access to MLS without being a licensed agent until Privy came along. And so Privy came along and gave us the common folk. Okay. What's funny is my MLS access is cheaper than my wife's MLS access to the direct MLS in Arizona. It costs her $2,400 a year to stay on as an agent with like broker fees and license stuff and MLS access and all that stuff. Her MLS access is less and more expensive than my MLS access. Right. And Amazing. it doesn't even have the bells and whistles. Like Laura prefers to use Privy because the MLS agent side of things doesn't have algorithms. It doesn't have deal finding. It doesn't have all the things that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah, the, the MLS is good for 
certain things like listing properties, um, you know, putting the property back into the MLS after there's a, a sale so that we can see those sales and we can comp. But that's about it. Besides that, it's just a deep, dark hole of data that'll suck you in. And before you know it, you spent half a day comping out three properties and now you got to go out in the field and try to meet people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marina says MLS is 90s software. Frustrating for agents. Yeah, I could totally see that. Um, okay. And then the third question was, um, uh, I haven't chosen my market yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Remember, we talked about this on day one. Choosing your market, typically you should just be in your backyard unless your market is really, really small. Like we had a girl on day one that said, I live in a town with 6,000 people. I was like, yeah, that's probably not a great market to do a lot of deals. And you'll do maybe one deal every couple of months, but you're not going to do a lot of deals. So um, if you are in a market with a good amount of people, 100,000 plus, just start in your backyard. Okay. Um, now, who in here, give me a no. Oh, by the way, Sun Valley, Idaho. Holy crap. What an amazing place, Joseph. I just went there last summer. Holy crap. What a cool town you live in. I saw like five A-list celebrities just chilling there. Carly Grunman, you got married. Gosh, everything about Carly Grunman's cool. You know? Um, I didn't even know it existed. I lived in Idaho for a little bit. And, and then I found out about it last summer. I'm just so stupid. Um, okay, so here's a question. Say no to me. Okay. Who doesn't have privy? Because we are going to do some follow along comping later today. Who, who doesn't have privy? Give me a no. Okay. So like hundreds of people don't have privy. All right. Um, all right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to turn the chat off. I'm going to give you, I, you guys do a free trial, right? We have a 30 day money back guarantee and we've got an amazing okay. discount for you and some announcements as well. So once we get there, we can talk about it. Okay, guys, go to startwithprivy.com. There's the website. And then I do have a code, PACE, or I think Laura at one point worked, but let's just use the code PACE. It's, I, that's the one. I do get sushi money from that. I usually give that away to Carly as a bonus so she can save up money to go live in um, Sun Valley, Idaho. Apparently, I didn't know you live, you got married there. And you want to go live there. What would you do without the ocean, Carly? Holy moly. Okay, go to startwithprivy.com um, and sign up for Privy. It is $97 a month. I told you on day one, I said, I'll never push my mentorship. I'll never push this. But there are some very basic tools that you should uh, have in order to find deals, find leads, comp, learn how to comp. People will go, what is comp? I did have somebody in the side chat. What does comp mean? Comp is another one of these stupid words that real estate investors like myself go, oh, you know, I don't want to use the word I'm going to compare properties or comparable property. What are the comparable properties to mine? Let's shorten it so that new people have no idea what the hell we're talking about. Let's say comp. I'm going to comp a property, which means I'm going to look at an opportunity. Let's say I'm on Privy. Privy has great um comping software i think that the one of the biggest reasons why we use you guys is because the software is so easy to use but you guys also have algorithms that help us find deals and i hope you can show us that today mm -hmm. um so it's like wow I, I i can download privy and i can find a deal i almost want to time you yeah i, I want to time you from the time that we open up privy to the time that you can find an opportunity that I could call, not that we will, it's five o'clock here. But let's say that from the time I say go to the time where you could go, this would be a good opportunity for you to call on. I wanna see how long that would take. You think it's five minutes? I think it's probably less, but we'll, we'll, we'll time it. Okay, let's time but it. Also too, it's like, I could tell you to call any property and it may not be a good deal. So I want I'm thinking like a solid deal with good numbers and good comps, comparables, that give us a good ARV. That's the other word that confuses people, pace, right? Yeah. People throw out the ARV word. Um, but yes, let's do that. I wanna find something that has really good data that shows that it's a deal. And then we can use the this fix and flip comparables to prove that it's a deal, mm. prove it. Guys, That's give me an emoji cool. and the, give me an emoji because I got the chat off. So the link stays there. Give us an emoji if you guys want him to go through that. 
And who's going to be my uh, official? Give me a, a give me a time clock emoji in the side. If you want to be, if we want to stop clock it, somebody's like, I don't know. Let me find that emoji. Let me find that emoji. <laughs> come on, first one that gets it. Come on, come on. Where's the stop clock emoji? If you will, give me an opportunity to set it up before we start the clock. Of course, I want yeah, to yeah, Explain yeah. what it is we're doing before the clock starts ticking. I'll, I'll pull myself off and I'm going to mute myself so you can go through and do a little pre explanation for people. Awesome. So, um, so you guys, if you haven't seen Privy before, you actually don't have to download anything. It's available on the interwebs. You just need an internet connection. Um, it is mobile optimized, so you can use it on your mobile device, but it works best on a computer because there's lots of data around. And on this little small phone screen, can you, you, can work, you can make it work for different things. But what I'm going to show you guys tonight is, number one, the data sources, right? We were talking about direct to MLS. We're going to talk about investor activity, which will help you choose your target market because you don't want to just choose your local market unless there's data that supports it. Um, and number three, I'm going to show you how you can do a really quick local market research so you can understand what a deal is. Um, and that is going to actually be important. Um, well, much of the stuff I'm going to show you will be important, even if you want to use batch leads, uh, because if you're pulling less from a certain, from you know, a place. You want to make sure you're pulling lists in the right areas. You don't want to just pull lists kind of just randomly. You want to make sure you're pulling lists in these high investor activity areas because unfortunately, if you, there's this whole concept of what's called ARV, after repair value. This is how we measure how good a deal is. We have an ARV, which is a house that's been fixed and flipped. And then we have unrenovated houses, right? So if you can buy an unrenovated house next to a renovated house and you can get it at a discount, let's say 60% of that amount, then that could be a good deal. So right around 60, 65% and lower is what a good deal is, depending upon the, the cost and the market and, and who the buyer is. So I'm gonna show you how you can figure out what that percentage is, right? Without having to be an expert in the market and be in the business for 10 years. And then I'm gonna show you exactly who the buyers are or the players We'll call them, and those are buyers, cash buyers, the people that are doing flips, and also the agents, the agents that are actually working with investors. We call them investor-friendly agents. And then I'm going to show you how to find a deal that you can write an offer on. And we've got users of our software who are writing 20, 30 offers a day using the exact same strategy that I'm going to show you guys tonight, okay? So on the map here, what you see is our coverage map where you see the gray and that yellow is kind of like what we would call like batch lead or prop stream level data. We have that nationwide same as, same as they do. Now, um, we're not experts, we would say, in, in list pulling, but we do have lists. You can pull, you know, absentee owners and tired landlords and vacants, and that all comes free with Privy. Um, you can pull up to 10,000. But then what we do is we stack on top of that, that direct to MLS. So there is no national multiple listing service. Every region has their own. In some areas like Texas, like Dallas has its own MLS, San Antonio has its own MLS, Austin has its own, and Houston has its own. And then there's probably like another 10 little small ones. So believe it or not, there's over 600 of them out there. And so you have to go to each one if you want direct. And that can obviously be a big lift, which is why nobody does it, because they just want to be nationwide and then say, oh yeah, we've got MLS. And that's fine, but if you want the best data, you're gonna to wanna to operate in these blue areas. So wherever you see blue is those direct data feeds. There's over 90 now. The pink ones are actually the ones that we're working on. Those are the coming soon markets. So those are in some phase, like we, we submitted an application or we're in compliance or our team has the data and we're just getting it ready to, to distribute to you guys. All right. So after we have that, we're going to have about 80 to 85 percent coverage of the entire populated U.S. OK, so which, that's exciting. So we're working on that really hard for all you guys that are using the platform and um, you won't have to pay extra for that. They'll just keep coming. OK, the um, gift that keeps on giving. It is. It's like it's always Christmas. So I can change my market at any point and it's not going to cost me any more money. Well, you can as long as 
we're going to get in the weeds on this one. Um, and that's part of the thing I want to talk about in a bit is if if you decided to sign up for Privy tonight on the monthly plan, we we'll take 20% off your first month. Okay, just make sure you use the promo code PACE and that'll give it to you for 77 bucks. Okay, 30 day money back guarantee. There's no risk. That'll be like the, the best way to get you started. If you have the bandwidth, the timing's right and you, it's in your budget, go with the annual plan and it'll be $814 for the whole year. What that gets you is grandfather pricing. So when we launch new features and we launch new things, I'll talk more in a bit about that. You'll get that stuff for free. If you're on the monthly plan and you know it's six months from now, the team decides that they're going to increase the price to you know one you know hundred dollars a month or one hundred and twenty dollars a month. If you're on the monthly, you might be um, susceptible to those price changes. So there's grandfather pricing on the annual side, okay? And then we got some new features coming out that you'll get for free too. Uh, so earlier, Pace was mentioned about choosing your market. There's three probably main three things that you should consider when you're choosing a market. Um, number one is, are you boots on the ground there, right? Like, is it is it where you currently live? Um, or can you get boots on the ground, right? Does your you know, family member live there? Or can you use an agent to have boots on the ground? The second one is their direct to MLS data. With direct to MLS data, you're going to have Rich, more rich information, more updates. I'm going to dig into that more a bit, but that data is much more engaging and it, it gives you more confidence. Okay. The last thing is this, what we call investor activity. So investor activity basically is what other investors are actually doing in the market. And it's my belief that that is some of the best education that's out there because, you know, Pace is, is a great coach, right? He's a great mentor and he's got great systems and if you implement his strategy, it will work, but you're the one that has to do the work. But is Pace going to know what a deal is today in Dallas versus Portland versus, say, Philadelphia? Maybe. I mean, if there's somebody that does, it's, it's likely him, but probably not. And he shouldn't need to know that. What will teach you that, though, is the data. The data is the educator. That teaches you the real estate side of the business. A lot of educators come in and they just want to focus on lead generation, the list polling and what scripts to use and, you know, which, you know, um, you know, if it's wholesale or, or fix and flip or all those strategies, the real estate side of the business is one of the most difficult things to learn because you really have to get in the weeds with it. And typically people wouldn't learn that until they're doing their own deals. So it's kind of hard to balance that. And so what often happens is they go out and they do lead generation, they get a deal or they get a lead and then they don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to run comps. I don't know what a deal is. I don't know what percentage of ARV to write my offer on. I don't have a dis, uh, disposition strategy. I don't have an agent. So all of those things is where we can help set you up. So even if you do decide to use Batch and do off-market uh, marketing, you're going to be way better prepared to handle those leads when they come in. Because if you just go and you market and you don't have the back end already solidified, you don't have that foundation then you're wasting money, even if the marketing works, right? That would be a, a really good problem to have, but don't put yourself in that situation. Let's, let's build the foundation first. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button here at the top. Damn, fix and fix and and you got flip. a fix and flip button? I got a fix and flip easy button, right? Dang. You were talking earlier about easybutton.com. You should change the name to easy button, bro. Dang, that's awesome. <laughs> So what I just did is I clicked that one button and what it is, it's basically just like a filter, but what it's doing is it's looking for where the fixed and flips are located. So again, how do we typically measure how good a deal is? We say, well, it's 60% of the ARV or it's 40% of the ARV. Well, you can't determine of the ARV unless you've got blue in that market. And so we try to make this really visual for you guys, right? Some people are like, oh, AI and analytics and data. And it's like, I mean, we were learning here, right? Could you understand a spreadsheet of, of AI or a graph or like a bar, you know, going up and to the right? Maybe. But we're, all you have to do with Privy is you just have to go to where the big blue blob is. If you can go to where a big blue blob is and click it, that's how you can choose a market. So where shouldn't you be looking for deals, right? Well, look at most of Nebraska. Look at most of South Dakota. Look at most of Minnesota. So if you live in those markets, it's going to be extremely challenging for you 
to get consistent deal flow. And like P said, could you get a deal done? You might, but I don't think that anybody's here to try to get one or two deals done a year, right? Like you, you want to scale and you probably got some big goals and you got some big, you know, money goals that, that you want to hit so that you can really like, you know, change your life or change the life of your families and your friends. And it's not going to happen in Sioux Falls. It's just not. Now, could you live in Sioux Falls and do deals elsewhere? Absolutely. But you're going to want to learn that other local market. So as we move I, I in. Want to, I want to point something out about that. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Yes. Today I get a deal, okay? Um, girl named Tabitha uh, sends me a text message. She says, hey, I've got a great sub two deal in Phoenix. Okay. I'm sorry, in uh, Las Vegas. I know you buy in Las Vegas because she watches my YouTube channel. And I go, great, no problem, call me. So she calls me, gives me the address. I go, yep, I'll buy the deal. But since you don't know what you're doing, I'll pay, basically pay you $1,000 for the lead because I'm gonna have to call the seller, lock it up, blah, 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 blah. And I go, can you go over to the house and take photos for me? Because you, know, you didn't give me any photos. And she says, I don't live in Vegas. I go, okay, so you live in Phoenix. She goes, no, I live in Pennsylvania. So she's found a deal in Vegas and she's wholesaling it to a guy in Phoenix, Arizona from Pennsylvania, okay? So when people ask me that really, um, it's not a dumb question. It's an, it means that you have inexperience. It's a very inexperienced question of, can I do this from anywhere? Guys, what is the answer? I opened up the side chat. What is the answer? Can you do this from anywhere and wholesale anywhere? What about if I'm in Canada? I live in Canada. I live in Israel. Can people get access to Privy if they live in Australia, Benson? We have users in Australia, Canada, and Israel. The Middle okay. East, Dubai. We've got a user in Dubai. Uh, Mexico. Yeah, and, and many of those people will never even be here. They'll, they'll never set foot in the United States, and they absolutely can use the software to find deals here. Cool. So, so Shannon Glanton says, I live in Germany. Okay. So, guy, hey, Chino, good to see you. Chino's in Vegas. Um, can you find a deal with an Indian accent? Yes, you can find. Actually, you know the best closer I've ever met in my, in my whole entire life. Okay. My best closer. I've ever met is a guy named Ryan Chenoweth who has a such a heavy stutter you can hardly understand what he says and I'm telling you guys this is a he's a master at work he, people that speak Vietnamese Chinese Hispanic any Hispanic language languages um, Spanish or other Hispanic languages Peggy Stevens says I know him best closer I've ever met he can barely speak he can barely get words to come out of his mouth so never, ever, ever ask that question of accents, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so Tabitha was hustling, right? So she found a deal in another market. I'm not sure how she found it. Um, maybe she was pulling lists, um, but that's great. So that just shows that you can. And, and we've got lots of people that are doing stuff virtually. Um, actually, the majority of our people that are just killing it, like just really killing it, they don't do it in their own backyard. Because here's the other thing that I learned from our users is that going around and driving and looking at houses is wasting your time. When you go and you, you spend your evenings driving for dollars or you go and on a weekend and you drive around looking at houses, that's all time that you are taken away from what really makes money in this business, which is finding leads, running comps and submitting offers. Uh, one of... Um, our user's name is Ruchika. She really wanted to do deals in Houston before we had direct to MLS there. And uh, and she's like, well, I, can I stay in, in Texas? I'm like, yeah, well, Dallas, we've got direct up there. So she said, fine, I'll do Dallas. She started to do stuff virtually. And before that, she always would go and drive and look at houses and she was just really struggling. And so we started doing deals virtually in the Dallas market. And she found, she got, she closed her first deal in two weeks. And to date, she's done over $200,000 in assignments, 100% virtual, all on market deals, no, yeah. no marketing. And it, here's what she told me. She said that 
once I, I realized that going and driving and looking at houses wasn't going to help me close deals, I felt liberating. Like yeah. she, it was like taking a monkey off her back. Like, oh my God, I don't have to drive around. I can just execute, write offers, get closed deals. And that's what she's doing. And, and so you'll find the same thing, you guys. Only focus on your own market is holding you back. Yeah, I agree with that. I, a couple of things too. Um, Jay says, yeah, I thought we had to drive around. Let me tell you about how driving around actually helps you. It is one of those things that if you want to take your kids around and get your kids kind of aware of the business, um, what I do with my kids is we'll go like on family nights, which is Mondays for us. Um, I'll drive my kids around, not all the time, but probably four or five times a year for family night. And I'll go, whoever picks the ugliest house gets ice cream. Or I'm sorry, gets to choose where we get ice cream. And then it highlights in my children's brain, like, hey, this is how you find real estate deals, right? So there's, you know, some fun ways to get your kids involved in it, but I don't, you don't execute while you're driving around. You got both your hands on the steering wheel, right? Um, it is a very inefficient way to get deals, okay? And also, Alexa says, when it's tangible, you get it. So when you're brand new, there's nothing wrong with you driving around these neighborhoods and looking at some of these houses and you see something on Privy and driving over to it and just kind of getting a feel for your, your, your state and your streets and all of that kind of stuff. But it's not how you execute. So what, what Benson is saying, he's 100% right. Do it as fun, do it for a hobby. I was a contractor for 10 years in Phoenix, Arizona. I drove a Prius around for 10 years in Phoenix, Arizona. I got to know just about every city, street, every restaurant, every, all the hole in the wall, cool little Hispanic spots that my, my uh, worker guys would tell me to go to. And I just know my city really, really well. I feel like driving for deals really helps you get to know your city, but it really keeps you away from executing. So if you're a bit, if you're goal is to execute, then stay away from driving for deals. I agree with what you're saying there, Benson. Thank you. Yeah. And I like how you kind of just reframed it about, you know, learning the market, getting familiar with it. Like, I think that's a lesson I, I overlooked um, because when you're learning, like sometimes you're just trying to get in the right mindset and, you know, going and driving, looking at houses. I think that would be a valuable exercise for sure. So I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah, you know, the, some people um, listen to podcasts. It's a good thing. Actually, the house I bought, I'll give you guys a good example of this. Um, the house I currently live in right now is um, a house I actually found in a weird way um, by driving for deals. Here's how I did it. It's very roundabout. I would, in order to give my wife a, 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 some ability to sleep in the morning, about three years ago, I would take, I would wake Corbin, Corbin would wake up at like six and she was one years old. So she was still breastfeeding and really like wanted to be next to mom all the time. And so it kept mom from being able to sleep. So what I did is I would take my daughter around three years ago, every morning, literally every morning, six, seven days a week. And I would drive around neighborhoods and I wasn't really looking for deals because I already had a great acquisition team. We had great systems and processes in place. I wasn't driving for deals, but I was driving for a place for my own family to live in. And I was just kind of meandering through neighborhoods and getting a feel of, do I like this street? Do I like this? You know, whatever. I remember I bought a house, my one of the first place that Laura and I ever moved into. And in order to get into our complex, um, you had to do a U-turn. 50% of the time, depending on what came, way you came in, in order to get into the, the spot. And I was like, man, why did I like plan this out? Why didn't I figure this out? So one morning I was driving around, this was years later, I was with Corbin, getting her, her away from Laura's um, you know, view so that she couldn't say, mom, give me milk and you know, sacrifice your sleep. And I was driving around and I tagged a house on Instagram that was like five houses away from Jerry and I said, oh, look, this house has a, there's an open house here. I might end up being your neighbor, Jerry Norton. And Jerry sends me a message. And he goes, you want to move in this neighborhood? I'll sell you my house. That's how I started the conversation. So, but you know what? That's called a unicorn dancing on a rainbow while winning the lottery. 
Right. That is, that it doesn't freaking happen. Okay. And that was a personal house of mine. So unless you're driving around looking at houses, just really spending quality time listening to podcasts, hanging out with your kids, making it fun, driving for deals is not an efficient way to get into this business. Right. And, and that's like driving for dollars. That's like the true definition of driving for dollars. There's another set of people that will like find all their leads for the day and map them out and then go drive, which is way more intentional. That's probably a better use of your time. But even then, that whole scenario is taking time away from running comps and writing offers. And maybe if you do the, you know, those 10 properties on a Saturday, you're going to feel accomplished. Like you did something in your business. Like, yeah, I'm working on my business. But maybe one of them is worth writing an offer on. So you spent a whole day finding maybe one property you could write an offer on. So the strategy I'm going to show you right now is going to give you the ability to virtually drive around, but see the most important thing that's going to help you to make a buying decision anyway, which is the data, right? The data is, is the, the core of all of this and then understanding what it's telling you, right? Like, again, you could have a bar graph and some line going up into the right and just like, what does that mean? It's not actionable, right? And that's where I think that we've done well with privies to make it really visual and intuitive and in a cool user interface that's actually fun. It's almost like playing a game. Like we've got mm. dozens of people tell us like, we're, it's like a video game. So see all these big blue blobs. So some of these jump out, right? Like this one right here, 3,400 properties have, have been fixed and flipped in the last 12 months. And that's what this is telling us. These are all fix and flips. Now, I'm not telling you that you should go and fix and flip. What I'm telling you is that you should target areas, if you can, and you can with Privy, that have fix and flip activity. Because this here, you guys, these are the ingredients to build a deal. And whether you believe it or not, you have way more control over your outcome, your desired business outcome, which is closing deals, if you do this reverse REI strategy. So we're basically just thinking several steps down the line, and we're reverse engineering it. So target areas that have high investor activity, which is going to increase the chances that you have properties that were flipped in the same neighborhood. And guess what happens when you have properties that were flipped in your neighborhood? Well, now you have data to be able to look at the comparable property sales that will help you to determine if the house that you're looking at is actually a deal. Because you know you've heard this a thousand times, Pace, like, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know what the comps are. There's no comps. I can't determine the ARV. I don't know if this is a deal or not, right? It's a common thing. And usually the reason why that is, is because they're just pulling lists and looking for leads in areas that were just haphazardly pulled or targeted, not intentional. So you see all of these icons on the map, you guys, these are all houses that were flipped. This is 12 months. So this is what we call a high investor activity area. Every one of these properties is a home that was flipped and it can actually teach you what a deal is in this market. And again, this is one of those things that you can't learn from a podcast or from YouTube University or from a book is what is a deal today, right? Because a deal today is not what a deal was three months ago. You know, we're in a shifting market. And then three months before that, when the market was hot, like people, anybody could get a deal. Now it's, it's tweaking again. So this is a house that was flipped, right? So this report we're looking at right here is called a live comparative market analysis. Privy's building one of these for every single property in the US and it does it all live. Now, if you're in a direct to MLS area, you get much more rich data, much more engaging. So like these rich property photos, you get agent information. Earlier, um, Pace was talking about agent outreach. So Frank Montro, this guy right here, he's the agent that represented this flipper. It's not easy to become an agent who represents flippers. You got to earn their business. So he knows how to work with investors, right? Below that is we the call we details. call these people unicorn agents, you, agents that work with real estate investors. We call them unicorn agents. Yep, just like Laura, right? She's she's like the the first unicorn agent, and right. all these other guys are are following suit. So as we scroll down here, we got more information. You got the property remarks. If you're a licensed agent in Privy, we can get you an, a different account. Allows you to see the private remarks, agent contact information. And then below that, our system actually pulls comps for you automatically. Now, these aren't just any comps. These are MLS comps. 
right? So these will change in real time. So if this house that is pending goes under contract or actually closes, it'll change in real time. And so that's really important when you're trying to pull comparables on a property and try to determine the value of the house in its as-is condition. But most importantly, what's the after repair value? What are the houses in the neighborhood that are being fixed and flipped that are like this one? What are those selling for? That's how you know if it's a deal. So you'll know if your unrenovated house is a deal, if it has similar characteristics, you know, similar bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, stories, property type, property style, if all those things are similar. And it's within a half a mile of a house that was flipped. The house that was flipped, that number is your ARV. And if you can get your house, at a discount from that number, then that's a deal. So we're, we're connecting all the dots for you. And it, it, I think most of the time, you guys, we're making it way more complicated than it needs to be. But this is where we can help you really simplify that and give you that local market education. So one of the things that we do at Privy that's proprietary is we're able to pull in this before and after data and put it side by side. The MLS doesn't even have this. So here's what this house looked like before it was fixed up. I mean, professional photos, like great lighting. You could tell they staged it. I mean, it just looks amazing. Oh my gosh, look at the, the death dungeon. Wow. <laughs> Were the, these photos on MLS? Is that where the photos are coming from? Yes. How did an agent think that that was a smart idea to put, like at least clear the stuff off the washer and dryer? You would think. It's like, we don't care. Let, let me show you how much I don't care. <laughs> So, well, here's here's the person that didn't care. Zaron Staniloff. That was the agent that listed his property. Now, here's, and then here's the after, right? So it's like, it's night and day. They right? did Look such a this. good job, dude. That, or that wood floor. Oh my gosh, it looks so nice. Yeah, it looks great. But you know, and they didn't go like over the top either. This is probably like, you know, most of the stuff is off the shelf. Or the only thing that's custom in here is the countertop, but that's okay because that's probably where the bar has been set. And that's one of the other things that people think is like every single house needs to be a triple digit flip. It doesn't. It could just be a normal flip that is where the bar has been set for that neighborhood. But how do you know that? Well, you don't unless you look at the data. So down here is where the numbers get it. This is where you start to get into like what a deal is, you guys. So this house Right. Earlier, we were talking about all the off-market marketing and how it can be very expensive to find deals. Well, this is a deal that if you had been paying attention and if you had privy back in uh, July, you could have gotten this deal for 65000 bucks. So they bought it for sixty five. dollars They sold it for 202 That's 32% of the ARV. Yeah, th that's amazing. I mean, people are like, oh, how can I find a deal at 70% of the ARV? It's like, dude, this guy bought it at 32% of the ARV. With zero marketing, right? Zero marketing cost. Pace, you told me once what you thought the average cost of, of acquiring an off-market deal. It wasn't like 10 grand. Yeah, for marketing, if, you're, if you've got like postcards and mailers and stuff like that, the average cost per contract is what we call it. Um, direct mail, billboards, TV, radio, advertisements, uh, pay-per-click, SEO, those types of advertising are $10,000 per contract. So think about what you're good at, you guys. Are you, are you good on the phone? Do you understand marketing? Do you have a good runway of, of, of marketing uh, budget? Because, you know, you can't just do one campaign. Like, you need to plan on like four or five, six months of consistent marketing to be able to get leads and then plan on the follow-up. Like make sure that somebody can answer the phone 24 hours a day. Make sure you got an online presence where people can click your link and go to your website and you got a video there and they can fill out a form or make sure you've got VAs who can do that and then it can sell, right? There's a lot of moving parts, but if you had been using Privy in July, you could have gotten this house for 32%. Then the second part of this is, okay, let's say you're a wholesaling, right? You come down here into the assessor's data and we're going to build a buyer's list, right? So there's acquisition, which is what we're talking about right now. And then there's disposition. Disposition is once you find a property, lock it up, get it under a contract, 
you're going to go and you're going to try to find the flippers that you can assign the property to, right? And then make a big chunk of cash. Well, the best way to build a targeted list of buyers slash flippers is to look at people who are closing deals today. And so every one of those red icons on the map has a buyer attached to it. So this is Remergence right here, Remergence LLC. So Remergence is a flipper that is willing to buy in Chicago in 60628. And they're willing to buy a two bedroom, two bath, 1000 square foot house. So part of the challenge in working with buyers is getting them to trust you enough for them to share their buying criteria with you or what's called their buy box. That takes some time, right? Because they're getting calls all day from people. And what's going to convince them to talk to you and actually trust you to give their buy box? Well, it's going to take some time and you know, actually a little bit of sales ability. This is where there's still some salesmanship and the strategy is getting buyers to want to work with you and getting agents to want to work with you. But those two people are, are driven and motivated by money. So it's easier to get them to want to work with you than it is to get a person who's in foreclosure who has their head in the sand, right? So yeah, I mean, an, agent, an agent's business is real estate, right? So it's like when you call them to say, I want to do a deal with you, they're like, oh, great. I'm also trying to do deals. It's not that hard. Um, let's, let's uh, you guys want to see uh, Benson find it. Uh, Benson, is there a filter on here? I want to buy an eightplex in Phoenix like this week. Is there a way we can find an eightplex that's on market here in Phoenix? Or something four units or larger? Is there a way we could do that? Yeah, there is. Let's let's do the timer thing real quick first. So let's okay, let's cool. do the timer thing here. See if I can find a deal. So whenever we're ready, we'll do that. But what I'm going to do to to find this deal, you guys, is I'm going to target this high investor activity area, and I'm going to click this one button. So this one button is going to help me find a deal to write an offer. On. Is that so the easy button? That's the easy button. Another one. Okay, so tell tell me when we should start the timer. I'm ready. You tell me to go. Okay, hold on. Let me pull it up. Okay, go. All right, so previous going in. It's pulling comps in this market right now. Um, after doing my market research in the Chicago area, I know I want to be lower than 55% of the ARV because this is a lower priced area. And I do want to be lower than say 120,000 bucks. So I'm just adjusting the filter slightly. I'm going to run that search. Could be going in and it pulled comps on all the houses in that area. And here's a house that I can buy today. It's a three, two. It's for sale for 79,000 bucks. Yeah. As you can see, this house needs a bunch of work. I'm going to scroll down into the comparables. And this house is in the same neighborhood and the closest sold fix and flip, just sold for 153,000. This one went for 163, this one went for 227. So this house is between 50, well, I mean, this is maybe even an outlier. I'd say right around 50% of the ARV at asking price. With zero marketing dollars, 79,000 bucks. This is a house I would write an offer on right now if I was targeting Chicago. Okay, that took you 56 seconds. 56 seconds. 56 seconds to find an opportunity that you could write an offer on. Now, what Benson just said, he said you also, um, this is asking, right? They know they're not gonna get asking. You could come in and go, I'll pay $59,000 for that, okay? Um, and they'd probably take it. I mean, look at the photos. They didn't even sweep the floor before they took the photos. Oh yeah. Somebody ran in there on their the iPhone. Yeah, it's like they, they ran in there on their iPhone. The agent who's listing the property is like, I'm not even going to take, lit it would literally take them five minutes to go through the property. At least they turned the lights on. I mean, the previous people didn't even turn the lights on. Um, yeah, I, you know, you could probably offer 59,000 bucks on that deal, get that deal, sell it for, you know, you're probably getting it 35 to 40 cents on the dollar. And your ARV is what, what was your ARV? Nearly 200 grand? Yeah, it was, well, no, 153. That's the, the best, you know, that's the one that was fixed and flipped. So let's just be conservative at 153. So it's 
And then you you put on another, say, $5,000 assignment fee. Uh, One thing I want to mention to you guys, too, is that some people have it in their mind. They got this $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 number in their mind that they need to make when they do a wholesale deal. I don't know who messed it up for everybody, but it's it isn't a reasonable amount to think you should be able to get on, a, on wholesale deals, especially with this strategy I'm showing you. If it took you 56 seconds to find a deal and write an offer, would you be okay making a thousand bucks on this? I'd be yeah. okay. I'd be okay making a thousand to 3000 bucks. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you can find deals like this all day, every day. You could literally write 30 offers a day. And if you think you wrote, if you write 30 offers a day, you think you would could close a few of those? Yeah, absolutely. I, I bet you could close three of those a day. If you, if you wrote 30 offers a day, if you got 10% of those, I mean, even hell, you could do three deals a week and make 40 grand a month. Oh yeah. And it's, it's really that simple, you guys. It, it's all in the button. So I had two easy buttons. I had the fix and flip button. And then I had the, find an active deal button and it found all these properties. This is just one market. This is, this is 39 grand. This was 69 grand. Like it, it pulls these things. These are the needles in the haystack. It's going in and it's filtering out all the stuff that is not deals because there's no data that says it's a deal. And then it shows the ones that are, and then you just come in and you just confirm the comps. And this house is right down the street from a house that was just flipped. That one is a 2-2. It sold for 265000 Ours is 74 k It's a 3-2. It's 28% of the ARV. Yeah. Ramon RC says, can you do this in the West Coast? Yes, you can do this on the best coast is what you meant to say. Sorry, East Coasters. West Coast is the best coast. You can do it um, anywhere. Now, again, in, in the direct MLS areas, it's it's way more intuitive because you've got the photos and you can see everything. If this was in uh, Boise, Idaho right now, you would see a street view here instead of photos. That'd be the main difference. Yeah. A um, couple things. A lot of people asking some of the same questions. Okay. So let's um, let's fix that. Will you let me, will you take your screen share off so I can do a screen share real quick? I want to show people something. Guys, for, the, for those of you guys that are brand new, I want you to know that we're kind of cool. Okay. And what do I mean by that? We have been doing the elephant challenge for nearly a year now. Okay. And if you go into, just go to YouTube and type in Pace Morby Elephant Challenge. Okay. There's a playlist here. Okay. And the playlist is, um, let's see, where's the one? seven months ago, nine months. I think it was the one that was nine months ago. And this one, the one that was nine months ago, what we actually did is that this was, we went through and we submitted that day. We showed you guys how to submit offers and we gave you guys the paperwork. We gave you guys the contracts. My wife, oh, look at Monday. Wow. Look how much time has passed by. Wow. There's the capitalist pig t-shirt. Okay. There you go. So um, go in here. You'll get, you guys will get the contracts. Okay. You guys will get the, we gave away um, wholesale contracts. We gave away JV contracts. We gave away how to submit an offer paperwork. Okay. So go in there. Esther says, I'm sorry, I logged in late. Privy is for your first month, if you use the code PACE, it's 77 bucks. If you, um, after that, it's $97 a month. Dramatically underpriced is that, that's the answer in my personal opinion. So um, there's, there's, there's that. Um, now, so many questions about Privy. People are gonna have a thousand questions about Privy. Do you, for your Privy clients, Benson, do you guys have training or live places that people can actually like raise their hand and ask a question? Oh yeah. I think we we overtrain, um, but right now we're doing at least two live trainings, Monday nights and Thursday afternoons, and we record all of them as well. And my team goes back through and, and codes them and tells like, like if you're looking for, I don't know, multifamily, 
you could type in multifamily into the learning center and it will show you all the videos that have multifamily in them. And you just go to that video and it tells you go to minute 45. And that's when Benson's talking about multifamily. So even if you got a full-time job and you're hustling, right? And you're you're up at night working late and you miss my training, you can still watch it. We record all of them, but that you can come in, raise your hand, ask questions live. Um, okay, but that's for privy clients, right? All privy users can come. Love it. All right, cool. Uh, Pam White says, where? Well, when you do sign up, you get a welcome email. And then in that welcome email, there's a kind of a checklist of like getting started items. One of those things is the link to the onboarding videos, which is eight videos that breaks down exactly how to use the system. And then there's another link to the, the uh, training page which is where we have the links to go and sign up and uh, watch the training videos or register for the up and coming live trainings. I love it. So Zach Russell, I want to chat with Zach Russell on this question real quick. This is a very common, awesome question. Zach Russell. Zach Russell Terrier. Zach Russell Terrier. What's up, bro? Hello. Hey. Hey, man. Ask your question for so everybody can hear it. My question was why would people buy from you versus if it's on the market, why wouldn't they just buy it themselves? Tell me you've never done a deal without telling me you've never done a deal. I have not, no. Okay, how did I know? I don't know. Because you don't know the nature of a buyer. Buyers, they're lazy. nope, they're busy. Very different. Buyers are out fixing and flipping houses. Man, have you ever managed contractors before, Zach? No, I worked for one. Okay, and you know how hard it is for them to manage and do all that. They were hyper disorganized, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so imagine being a fix and flipper that's doing five or six of those. Do you think they have time also to find their own deals? No. Okay, literally not one fix and flipper I know even knows how to find deals. Wholesalers and real estate agents bring them to those investors. Not one fix and flipper I know is out there looking for their own deals. Same thing with buy and hold people. Buy and hold people don't know what you're learning right now, which is how to find deals. Buy and hold investors, you know what their, their dumb butts do? They go on bigger pockets and learn how to go to retail agents and go, let me know when you find a deal on, on the market. Burr investors are not out there actively looking for deals. They're too busy burring and refinancing and managing contractors. They literally don't have the time. Can I add something about that? You could yeah. make that same exact question, Zach, for off-market deals. So earlier, Pace mentioned that if you're buying a list, 500 other people have that same list. So you could say, Zach, well, well why, why would a, a buyer not just go get that foreclosure for themselves? They got the list, right? Why don't they go and do that? Because only one person can get the deal. And if you have efficiencies in your business and you've got, you know, understand investor focused. Uh, investor, um, how to, high investor activity areas, and you have a system like Privy, if you get there first and you lock it up, that means nobody else can have it. And there's not a surplus of deals. There's a shortage of deals. It's supply and demand. There's more demand for deals than there is supply. So if you go there and you get a property under contract before anybody else, and it's at a, a price that's lower than what buyers are buying at in that market, buyers will want it because they need to, they need deal flow. So that's that same question could be asked of off market. It can also be asked of on now. The other question people ask is, well, isn't there a lot of competition for on market? There is, but here's the thing. There's way less competition for on market than there is for off. And I'll explain it this way. Every person who starts off in the business is told to go buy lists right? Skip trace, go and market. So you have this flood of uneducated people who don't know what they're doing, sending mailers, cold calling, skip tracing, text blasting, ringless voicemail, those same people. And those people are inundated. They have hundreds of postcards. They got thousands of texts and phone calls it, because there's no barrier to entry. There's, there's no bar. There's no sort of vetting that has to be done for off-market marketing. Anyone can do it. And it creates noise. With on market, there's some things you have to figure out. Like, well, you have to figure out how to work with an agent. 
most people just avoid it. Right out of the gates, you're getting rid of half of the people out there. Then you got to figure out how to handle earnest money. Oh, I don't have a thousand dollars earnest money. I'm not going to do it. Right. You get rid of another chunk of, of competition. And then you have to figure out the proof of funds. Oh my gosh, I don't have the money to buy this thing. I'm not going to go down that path either. So the simple fact of going for on market is you're eliminating competition because there's a higher bar that's set for you to target those. And so you will have less competition. You just have to get there faster, more efficient than the people that are out there. And I just showed you how to do it. Um, so Kizzy, said, not Kizzy, but Rosa says, stupid question here. So can you use the system for sub two deals or will it only work for wholesaling? So Rosa, I think you're asking a, a different question, actually. Here's why I create, I'm the creative finance guy. So of course I'm going to have a biased opinion. I think creative finance dominates all strategies. Why? Because I can wholesale cash deals and sub two deals. I can also fix and flip um, cash deals and sub two deals. I can also buy and hold cash deals and sub two deals. Creative finance is the gasoline to the real estate fire. Okay. So yes, any strategy, any strategy that you are using to find opportunities, you can use creative finance to make it actually easier for you to get the contract. Okay. Uh, John, I think John, are you, John's asking the question, can I do due diligence or title search on privy? The answer is no. That's what the title company's job is. You don't want to do, you don't want to rely on a title search from online. If you are in the process of buying a title policy, you want to make sure that you are using a title company for that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And they insist that you do. Like they will, they won't insure it if they don't do the research themselves. Right. Um, Matthew Adkins says, so I'm not lowballing. I'm actually making a good offer. That, that is 100% correct. I mean, look at the house he just found randomly, 56 seconds, found a property that probably just 10 to $20,000 off of where a Burr investor would want to buy that, right? A, somebody would buy that deal, put 60 grand into it, refinance and hold into their portfolio. That's, the, that's probably the buyer for that deal would happily pay you a three to $5,000 finder's fee for that. Yeah. Okay. Is he saying a Burr investor? Yeah, J, J Burr, B-U-R-R-R-R. -R 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 -R. Okay. Yeah, it's not cold. We're not doing deals in Chicago. This is, it's an investment strategy. Yeah. Um, just focus on the easy buttons. Okay, cool. How can I, if I want to pull a list on, not a pull a list, but is there a filter that I could find multifamily opportunities in Phoenix? Yeah, you can. And you mentioned this earlier, but um, with, with multifamily, there's kind of a cutoff with where you're going to find properties on market right around four or five units, right? Yeah. And you, you, and you nailed it. It's because of the lending side of the business, but it's also where agents feel like they're going to get the most eyeballs. So, and it's kind of an understood industry thing. Like, okay, well, right around four or five units, I'm going to find fewer buyers are looking at the MLS to find those deals. So I'm going to go put them on LoopNet or CoStar or um, Crexy, right? That's where people typically look for multifamily properties that are greater than four or five units because that's just where they, it's optimized for that. Can you find on-market 20-unit apartment buildings on Privy? Yes, but if the agent decides to list it there. So the agent is the one that decides whether or not it's going to be worth their time and effort to put that listing on the MLS. So let's go to Phoenix. I love that you guys have Phoenix MLS data now. My wife was like so pumped about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, in two days, you guys get to play the Nuggets. Oh, yeah. That's coming down the pipe, you guys. I think the Suns are going to take the Nuggets, bro. Come on. I think you'll probably edge us out in the end. It, I just think that uh, Durant and the rest of the team are just starting to click, and it's going to be too much for the Nuggets. but. We'll see. That so, was a good trade. That was a really good trade they made. Oh, man. It was unbelievable. Like, I was bombed. I was hoping to go to the East, but it didn't happen. So, you guys, so in the filter right here, we've got a multifamily box. And 
I'm going to leave the number of units off for now. Well, actually, I'm just going to do greater than two because I just want to see how many there are in general that are on market. Okay. Um, and we'll just do all. So here's here's the multifamily properties that are currently on market. Mm, love greater it. Okay. Than, greater than two units. Okay. So here's a four unit, two, here's a 23 unit building. Love it. Six, 10, two. So there's a bunch here. Now you wanted what was what was the cutoff for you, Pace? Uh four. Four. So just put four here in the minimum. And here's a bunch. There's 69. Do another filter for me. Go mi maximum maximum amount is 16. Let's see if we can even get it smaller. I like smaller lists. It means I have to make less calls to get what I want. If it's like five, I'd be happy. Damn, this is still a lot. Yeah, the majority of them are are, are smaller. Let's bump it to six units or more. See guys, this is what you do. You're like, when you're trying to create a list of people to call, you just kind of dial it down. You go, I don't have time to call a whole list today. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call, oh yeah, here we go. 13. Are these like bungalows or what? Yeah, it's gotta be. How many, how many are, are listed? This is weird. Is this like a trailer park or what? I think it's like glamping or something. Like people, this is like an Airbnb type of thing. Communal areas. This is weird. <laughs> how many? Oh. How many listings are there total? This there's twelve beds, thirteen units. No, no, not this listing. Back to your list. Oh, uh, twenty nine. 29. That's perfect. You yeah. want that list? Yeah, I want that list. That's great. So uh, we have a download. You can list um, download feature as well. You guys, you get up to 10,000 per month for free with your privy account. That includes off market leads, like I said earlier, foreclosures and absentee owners and such. So let's go ahead and download that. So you're telling me that you can even get me some off market leads like foreclosures? Yeah, foreclosures. You mentioned tired landlords earlier. Um, Absentee owners, these are great buyers and sellers. I love absentee owners. Yep. Who 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 thinks privy is the bomb? Okay. So guys, go to startwithprivy.com, use the code PACE. Benson does two trainings per week, Monday nights, Thursday afternoon. This is the only tool you need to get started. You don't need a CRM. You don't need some expensive gadgets. You don't need anything else. This does all your comping for you. My wife loves this. Our team loves it. Molly uses it all the time for those of you guys who love Molly. Who's, who's a Privy user in here? Give me a yes. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Who Who is going to sign up for Privy? Let Benson know. Type in the word... Um, Type in the word Benson. People are like, how do I spend, spell Benson? Give Benson some love. Say, I'm going to sign up for, for Privy by typing Benson. Benson. Everyone's spelling Benson. it right. That's good. Damn, that's pretty impressive. That's a lot. So yeah. here's the other thing, to you, you guys, if you do decide to go on the annual plan, we've got two exciting new features coming up that you're going to be getting for free if you're on the annual plan. So we're launching a, a new data partnership with the largest rental data provider in the country. And we're going to be able to create uh, filters to search for properties based off of how they measure how good a deal is in the rental space. So gross yield, cap rates, cash on cash return, and annualized return. So you're going to get that for free, right? Because yes, we all like to do deals, but probably most of us, the plan is to start acquiring rental properties, right? We want, we want a yeah. portfolio. And that's probably a step Right. And then next thing you know, you're going to be doing deals with pace, right? In the multifamily world, but we gotta we gotta get there, right? So 
rental properties. And then right stay, shortly yeah, after stay that, away, stay from, stay away from multifamily. All you people get so excited about multifamily stuff. It's, it's a poison. Do not get involved in multifamily is not a beginner business. Right. I'm, I mean, even me, dude, like I'm, I'm going through hell right now, starting our fund. And I'm some, at least one person in here thinks I'm cool enough to like say pace is awesome at real estate. I'm telling you, if you think I know everything about real estate, guys, I'm getting my face kicked in on multifamily right now in a good way. I'm learning a lot of lessons, right? I'm in the, mm. I'm in the phase where I'm learning a lot, right? This year, next year, I'm learning a lot. We're acquiring a lot, management being put in place. It's not even a game of real estate. Multifamily is a game of business. You are buying businesses is what really what you're doing. So stay away from multifamily. Uh, another thing that, um, let's unshare your screen. I'm going to wrap you up and get you out of here. Thank you so much. I know you're- I mentioned one last thing, Pace. I apologize. Shortly after that, we're launching, um, we're, we're bringing in all the air DNA data for short-term rentals. So if you're ever interested in like short-term rentals, you're going to get that upgrade for free too. If you do, if you do the annual plan. So that's coming like late summer. Um, amazing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, guys, give Benson some love in the side chat. Tell him thank you for showing up. Okay. Now, um, Joseph says, what about commercial? But guys, why do you want to start with commercial? Like, is it just because the building's bigger that you think it's, more attractive like what is it about commercial and multifamily gets you guys so excited the money is bigger meaning you got to cut bigger checks and you got to have bigger teams and bigger payrolls to be doing that some of you guys are afraid to sign up for a 97 dollars piece of software yet yet you're all like i'm gonna get started in multifamily <laughs> you won't even afford the gas for the month to drive your multifamily back and forth and you're squabbling over 97 bucks a month okay why even do commercial? You guys should just go straight for islands. Like you can go buy an island. That's a great point. Let's go buy islands on Mars, you know, while yeah. we're at it. You want to go big? Go big or go home. Yeah, go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of people are like, I'm starting in multifamily. Good luck, sucker. Yeah. Good luck. Meanwhile, I, I'll have bought 10 single family homes, have a ton of traction, have cash flow coming in that's helping me pay for um, my team and my scaling. And you're going to be over there submitting LOIs on $15 million properties that even if you did get it under contract, you wouldn't be able to raise the money, okay? Because you have no credibility. And B, if you did raise the money, which 99.9% .9 sure you will not be able to, you acquire the deal, okay? How are you going to manage it? You don't know, you don't even know how to manage one single family unit. Okay. So, um, stop with the multifamily questions, shiny object. There you go. Nick says that yeah. shiny object syndrome. Benson, thank you for joining us today, brother. I appreciate you so much. Thank You're you, man. It's man. good to hang out with you again. Thank you, Carly. Thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate all the love. It's great seeing you guys get signed up and then join me on the next train. It's going to be on Monday night. I'm looking forward to working with you guys. It's going to be a blast. Thank you, brother. Appreciate Bye, you guys. Guys, go to startwithprivy.com, use the code PACE. Yes, I do get paid for that. When I get paid for stuff, I will tell you, uh, we get paid for that. We give our employees bonuses when you, when you guys sign up for that stuff. Um, so here's what I think we should do, actually. Is Don Walker in here? Don Walker, are you in here? Where's Don Walker? Yes, uh, Verdon, I, I do use my, um, I do use a property management company for my single family stuff. Okay, um, Don Walker, let me bring you up here real fast. I love my sub two students. What's up, Don? How you doing? Hi, Pace. What are you doing? Are you driving around? What are you doing? I'm driving. I just left my brother's house. I was watching my nieces. When are you doing uh, baby elephant training? What, what days are you doing that? How can people get in touch with you on that? So I'm doing it Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 11 to 2, or it's 11 to 1 central time. Um, hey, Pam White, she says, how can I ask a question? I'm a sub two student. Pam White, Saturday morning, I have a five-hour Q&A. Come hang out with me on that. Okay. Uh, also, Pam White, we have 36 
Zooms a week for sub two students. I'm sure you probably saw the calendar this week. There's multiple people you could get help from, but if you want, come hang out with me on uh, Saturday morning. I'll be there for four, maybe five hours, okay? Um, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. For everybody that's a privy client, the action takers, I don't, I don't, here's what I don't want. I don't want non-action takers going and bothering Don. No offense to you guys, but there's so many people in here that spent three days on this live with me. We have 1,100 people on here right now. And there's some of you guys that haven't set up your business, you haven't picked your market, and you haven't even got privy or any other way to actually bring leads to somebody like Don. Don, let's, let's be real. We're adults. You want to help people, but do you want to help people that are not taking action? Uh, no. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. So if you guys are a private, uh, privy client, um, Helen says, I just signed up for Sign privy, up. but didn't put in the code. Why? Saves you 20 bucks, literally paying you to do it right. So anybody that's a privy client, what we'll do is we will send an email. Listen to me, Ivan. We will send an email to Don Walker's training for everybody that is a privy client. If you're not a privy client, you're not an action taker. Therefore, you ain't gonna get the extra free training, okay? So Carly, can you do me a favor and uh, get with Benson with everybody that's a privy client and um, connect with Don and let's send people over to Don. I wanna do, I wanna buy 15 more deals from Don this year that she does with baby elephants through her training. Awesome, would love to do that. Okay. Love it. You're awesome, Don. Appreciate you. Thank you, Pace. Love you. Love you too. You're amazing. I, I love everything about Don Walker. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go hang out with my kids. That's the end of this week, this month's challenge. I kept it super basic. And what we're going to do is for everybody that's a privy client, we'll send you guys um, a link to Don's training for next week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. She does calls. She actually just calls sellers. Okay. If you are a sub two student, I will see you guys. To, oh my gosh, if you're a sub two student, couple of things, okay? Please go to whereispace.com, okay? If you go to whereispace.com, I wanna see, and this isn't just for sub two students. I'm doing book signings. Next week, I'm flying to Seattle, LA, Vegas, okay? Seattle, LA, Vegas. I'm then gonna go to Salt Lake City, Denver, Colorado, I will be in Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, Houston, Dallas, Des Moines. No, not Des Moines, Iowa. What's the name of that town? Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska, Kansas City, and Miami. I will, be, I will be in Seattle on Tuesday of next week. So that's in like four or five days. I'm going Seattle. Let's pull this up. Let's see if I can give you guys a difference. There you go. So I'm going Seattle. I'm then going to L.A., I'm going back home to Phoenix. Then I'm going Vegas, Salt Lake. Okay. Then I'm going to go Denver, U uh, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Charlotte, Miami, back up to Kansas City, Missouri, and then Omaha, Nebraska. That is happening this coming week. I will be signing your copy of the book. And if you don't have a copy of the book yet, because it's still in the mail, I am bringing my own book slips, okay? Custom, actually bo custom book slips that you guys will get that are different than these book slips that will show you that you got your book signed from me at a book signing party. Um, those are happening. If you go to whereispace.com, it's completely free to hang out, come attend, take a photo with me, sign the book. We've officially hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. So thank you guys so much for the support on that. So go to whereispace.com and it will give you my whole travel schedule. Then uh, sub two students, for the first time ever, the head of my multifamily fund, Ted, is going to be doing our first multifamily training tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for the sub two community. So I look forward to seeing you guys in there tomorrow morning. And then on Saturday morning, I'll be doing a four hour Q and A for sub two as well. Like I do just about every week. Sometimes I do two or three of them. Sometimes I do one, sometimes I, based on my travel and I'm doing five meetups for sub two community, I might do zero for that week. Um, did everybody have a good time this last couple of days? Let me turn the chat on. Did everybody have a good time? Did you guys all learn a couple of things? 
everybody have a little bit of momentum, a little forward movement, maybe connect with some people. Awesome. I appreciate you guys. 1,100 people showing up today. I told everybody that was super advanced just to stay away. I don't want you here. Normally, we get two to 3,000 people to show up for the Elephant Challenge. Um, this month was just about some basic stuff, okay? Um, we will send you Don's information uh, sometime tonight, okay? For all Privy clients, we'll get you guys the Zoom links for Don's training for next week if you are a Privy client, okay? Um, love it, love it, love it. Thank you for everything. Yes, you're welcome. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I be on the five? Oh, do you guys want, who wants to call on my uh, multifamily list? Here's what I'll do. I'll give it to Dawn and Dawn can call that list next week on her training and I'll do a deal with wh whoever does something on that. That's what I'll do. Go to Dawn's training next week. I will give that list to her. I'll spend the money on the list and you guys will have a list that skip traced all the phone numbers and Dawn will show you how to make calls to those people. And um, as long as you are a Privy client, start with privy.com, uh, use the code PACE, you will get that link. Who's going to be, who's coming to the book tour, by the way? Who's going to come see me in the, at the, on the book tour? Uh, I'll do the book tour multiple times. I'll go to like New York. We're going to go to Detroit. We're going to go to a whole bunch of places, but this is just my first two or three, two weeks of it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, man, this is going to be great. Thank you guys so much. Go to whereispace.com to see where I'm headed. And I'll see you guys next month on the Elephant Challenge as we take this to the next level. Um, appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much. Have a great, great night.